In this session, let us discuss about per unit quantities. Why we have to use per unit quantities? Okay. Basically, because of transformer, AC power system is existing because if it is AC, we can keep on like, you know, uh, increase the voltage levels for transmission. And again, we can keep on step down the voltage levels for utilization. Okay. If it is DC, there is nothing like that. Okay, so we don't have any replica of transformer in uh, DC. That's why DC failed. Okay, so again, let me tell you, because of existence of transformer, AC power system is existing. But because of transformer only, the analysis will become very difficult. Okay, for example, let us think of load flow studies of your power systems. Okay, in load flow studies, what is meant by load flow studies? Like, you know, we should be able to calculate voltage current, active power, reactive power, power factor at each and every node and through each and every branch under like you know contemplated conditions or for calculations for future okay and uh, in order to design the transmission line and also for healthy conditions without any faults and all. Now let me take a small power system okay because I have to prove now why because of transformer like you know why our load flow studies is becoming complicated okay now actually this problem already we solved okay previously by taking this as 30 plus j40 by taking this as 3 plus j4 and by taking this as 480 volts at an angle zero okay now in this simple power system generation generated voltage has been stepped up for the transmission transmitted voltage has been stepped down for the utilization purpose okay now in this case like you know if i want to calculate for example transmission line current i transmission line current okay in order to calculate transmission line current what to do for example the zl will be there okay this impedance has to be added with the secondary impedance okay and that the total impedance has to be transformed like you know hvt lv lv to hv like that and that particular impedance should be added with the primary leakage impedance and that should be added with transmission line impedance and that should be added with secondary leakage impedance and the total has to be reflected okay and then my primary leakage impedance has to be added and then plus we have to add with the generator leakage impedance or total leak total impedance of the generator and if induced voltage here is eg okay eg divided by total reflected impedance will give you current here okay now that current has to be transformed again from here to here depending on the turns ratio of transformer and then you are going to calculate transmission line okay so what is the difficulty here the main difficulty is transmission like you know transformation ratios of transformer okay so means like you know without the transformer in physical world power system ac power system will not exist but because of transformer in analysis on paper in order to analyze it is creating so much of difficulty or complicatedness of the uh, load flow studies problem okay now what is our purpose of per unit quantities okay for example if i can eliminate transformer not from the physical world but on paper for analysis if i can eliminate transformer from the analysis under that condition what will happen means this plus this plus this plus this because uh, we need not transform from lv to hv or hv to lv so very simple logic is from paper i want to eliminate transformer Okay, if I can eliminate transformer, I need not reflect maybe impedances or currents or voltages from LV to HV or HV to LV. So I want to eliminate transformer from paper, not from the physical world. Now, let me tell you now, why no load currents? For example, in your uh, power system, transmission line, sorry, load flow studies. In load, load, load flow studies of power systems, why we, do, we don't consider actually, <clears throat> okay? We don't consider shunt branch parameters of your transformer okay people say that like you know why no load currents are not considered in power systems people say no load currents are negligible that's why we neglected no no basically in order to get the advantage of like an you know, elimination of transformers from the from the paper like you know we should not consider at all the shunt branch for that also this is very good interview question for that also let us analyze here now this is the model okay so this is the generator and for the generator, internal leakage impedance. And after that, shunt branch parameter, approximate equivalent circuit I have taken. And after that, primary leakage impedance, transformer, secondary leakage impedance, transmit line impedance, shunt branch parameters of the second transformer, and primary leakage impedance, transformer, secondary leakage impedance, and load impedance. Okay. For example, if I want to transform, for example, if I want to calculate transmission line. 
without per unit quantities let us see okay now this plus this can be added directly and the total can be transformed from here to here by HUTLV or LV to HV like you know square terms and all that can be added with this directly okay now up to here it's fine up to here it's fine but what about shunt branch if you consider the shunt branch it is forming T network okay so the moment it forms T network is it increasing the complexity or not yes so for example if I can eliminate this okay if I can eliminate this then directly I can add okay then directly I can add then reflect it then I can add okay again shunt branch parameters are no load currents in our power systems means we are not going to consider it is not because no load currents are negligible but it is because it is increasing the complexity in load flow studies okay so let us remove it then only we can add directly and we can calculate eg divided by total impedance will give the current that current can be transformed to here such that transmission line current can be found okay so for a simple power system if it is that much complicated after with only two transformers if you have thousands of transformers in the physical world how to analyze load flow studies even super com super computers also will not be able to solve the problem okay now <coughs> per unit quantities already everyone know that everyone know that per unit quantity means that quantity is going to be the actual value by base value actual by base value in same units okay actual value in some units divided by base value in same units okay so if actual value is in voltage base value also should be voltage in volts if actual value is in ohms base value also should be in ohms okay now in load flow studies load flow studies what are the things we have to calculate okay voltage we may have to calculate at each and every node current we may have to calculate in each and every branch and active power and reactive power complex power power factor okay these are the like you know three plus three is six things we may have to calculate in our uh, load flow studies of power power systems now out of this okay any power factor is anyway in per unit because it's a dimensionless quantity okay it's a dimensionless quantity so power factor is already in uh, per unit quantities forget about it now if you compare one thing let me tell you here okay the actual value should be given by the actual system we are not supposed to take actual value for example if i have wall outlet here our normal wall outlet here how much should be voltage 230 230 so how much should be voltage 230 volts that is base value of uh, voltage definitely we can consider but the actual value can be 220 volts only okay so should be voltage is going to be 230 the actual value is going to be 220 so the actual value 220 divided by base value 230 can be the per unit quantity so we have a complete liberty to consider base values but we don't have any chance to take actual value because actual value should be given by the system base values we can consider we can take okay now means we are trying out of these quantities okay of six what are the things which we should be considered as a base value we have to see per power factor is anyway in per, per unit quantities dimensionless quantity forget about it and between these three base value will become same why because this is vi cos pi vi sin pi this is vi okay so forever like you know understanding we are saying this as watts this as uh, var and this as va okay but from the dimensions point of view vi volt ampere cos pi don't have any uh, what is a dimension so this is volt ampere from dimension point of view q vi sin pi so volt ampere sin pi don't have any uh, dimension and this is going to be vi so all these three are volt amperes only so base value will be same for all these three okay now if you see voltage will be there current will be there out of these three one base value can be considered now for example out of this out of these three we are going to consider s as the base value okay because like you know why ac machine capacity should be designated in kva not in kilowatt that's a big interview question again like you know we will discuss that after gate 2020 not now anyway out of these three s base can be taken 
okay now v base can be taken i base can be taken s base can be taken but now here one problem will come for example if i give a choice to you to select your own voltage base to select your own current base to select your own va base va base then means what you may do is for example voltage base of 100 volts okay you have taken voltage base of 100 volts current base of 10 amperes 10 amperes then how much should be va base 100 volts into 10 amperes is going to be 1000 va should be the va base for example if you consider this as 100 and if you consider this as 10 and if you consider this as 10000 10000 like you know this uh, what do you say interlocking phenomena okay because voltage base multiplied by current base should be the VA base, VA base. Now, if you consider this as 100, this as 10, you are forced to consider this as 1000. You are not supposed to consider 10,000. So, out of these three, in order to maintain that interlocking mechanism, because formula is there, okay? So, in order to maintain interlocking mechanism, out of these three, only two should be considered as base values, okay? For example, if I consider V base, I base, S base should not be considered, but S base should be considered as V base into I base. Okay, or V base, S base, if I consider, I base should not be taken, but I base should become V A base by V base, it should be. Okay, so out of these three, only two should be taken, that is the conclusion. Now, let us think of voltage base, should I consider voltage as base value or not? Okay, for example, if you think of your normal at home wall outlet, means the actual value may differ, but what about the should be voltage? Should be voltage should be 230 volts, you know. Maybe three phase line to line, 440 volts, you know. Maybe primary side of distribution transformer, how much should be voltage? 11 kV, you know. Prior to that, 33 kV, you know. Prior to that, 66 kV, you know. Prior to that, 110 kV, you know. Prior to that, 220 kV, you know. And prior to that, 400 kV also, you know. Okay. So just by sitting at our home, we are deciding the should be voltage of national grid. Okay. So base values of voltages from our home to national grid, all the things we know. So let us consider voltage base okay now what about i base because in between i base and va base only one thing should be taken because already voltage base has been considered now about current about current okay at our home for example uh, like you know we say, we said uh, should be voltage for uh, should be voltage at our home should be 230 volts how much should be the current capacity at our home we don't know that depends upon the area of cross section of copper used from your energy meter to your plug point okay so point here is forget about national grid current but at your home your wall outlet current you don't know okay now leave about it now here okay va base we are going to consider va base because this anyway like you know we don't have any proper data here this we should and in between these two we have to select this or this now let us come to here okay now in va base in va base complete machine capability designed capacity should be designated should be decided by means kva not by kilowatt one interview question is there we will discuss later in detail anyway ac machine capacity should be designated in kva okay so we are going to select this okay now let us think of z value z value in per unit so what is z value in per unit is going to be z actual divided by z base but we did not take any z base value here so z base should be denominated like you know should be renamed in terms of somehow va base and v base so this is going to be z divided by z base is nothing but v base by i base okay now again i base should not be taken what is i base uh, directly we should not taken but that should be in terms of va base and v base so va base by v base is i base so this is going to give you z into va base by v base square is going to be z per unit formula which should be remembered okay now in our power systems we will convert this into into 10 to the power of minus 6 into 10 to the power of minus 6 which will give you mva base by kv base square nothing more okay now let us discuss how this per unit quantity is are eliminating transformer from the analysis in the sense transmer tra what do you say transformation ratios of transformers should be automatically taken care by per units then only we can we means uh, our target is reached now in a transformer for example this is 10 kva transformer and this is 250 volts by 2500 volts transformer 
okay logic here is very simple okay so in between primary and secondary or lv and hv you please take same va base same va base okay on hv side take hv voltage as v base on lv side take LV voltage as rated voltage as V base. Okay, so then automatically trans ratio will be disappeared. Okay, I will discuss about that soon. But anyway, see here. For example, VA base I have taken and V base on LV side I have taken 250. So let me calculate I base. Okay, though it looks so simple, many guys will forget that because after this immediately we are going to solve three problems. Then automatically we will understand the concepts. Okay, I base. What is I base? VA base by V base. Okay. What is VA base? VA rated. That is 10,000. Divided by what is V base? 250 volts. 250 volts. So, what is 10,000 by 250 is going to be 40 amperes. Okay. What is 40 amperes? Isn't it a full load current for LV winding? Yes. So, conclusion is base value of current in transformer is nothing but full load current. Keep it in mind. Okay. Now, next thing is how this particular per unit quantities are able to eliminate transformer. Let us see. Okay. Now, for a transformer, for example, for the same transformer, okay, let me connect maybe ZL. Okay, so this is 10 kVA, 250 volts by 2500 volts. Okay, now let me calculate ZL in per unit. ZL in per unit equal to ZL into VA base by V base square. What is VA base rated capacity as we discussed just now? So this is going to be 10,000 divided by V base square, HV side, this is an HV side, so 25 100 square per unit keep it aside now let me calculate ZL dash and let me calculate that ZL dash in per unit if ZL equal to ZL in per unit equal to ZL dash in per unit you need not transform so transformer will disappear now let me calculate ZL dash how much is ZL dash is going to be normal way ZL HV side LV side HV to LV voltage should be reduced, current should be increased, V by I should be reduced by square times. So that is going to be ZL into 250 by 2500 square, 1 by 10 square in ohms. Okay. Now let me calculate ZL dash in per unit. In per unit. This is going to be ZL dash into VA base by V base square. VA base is same divided by what is v base square 250 square equal to what is zl dash zl into 1 by 10 square so this is going to be zl into 1 by 10 square into 10,000 by 250 square okay now if you push this zero to inside okay if you push this zero to inside 2500 square 10,000 by 2500 square 10,000 by 2500 square is zl per unit only no so conclusion is very simple zl per unit equal to zl dash per unit okay so if i come back to our previous like you know uh, diagram okay for example if i can convert this zl into per unit zl into per unit i need not transform by the trans ratio square or trans ratio or lv to hv or h to lv directly zl in per unit can be directly placed here so transformer is disappeared or not yes but to utilize per unit quantities what is the disadvantage no load currents of transformer should not be considered it is not because no load currents of transformers are negligible but it is because per unit quantities will not allow you to use no load currents in your load flow studies okay so this is the advantage of per unit quantities, now we will solve problems.